On October 25th, the YouTuber Mr. Beast posted a video on explaining his plan to raise $20 million to plant 20 million trees by the 1st of January 2020. This idea was accepted by Mr. Beast subscribers over various social media platforms as a celebration for reaching the major milestone of 20 million subscribers. Mr. Beast accepted the challenge and teamed up with Mark Rober to start the hashtag Team Trees project. This ambitious endeavour has necessitated the largest YouTube collaboration in history. Notable mentions including Smarter Every Day, Linus Tech Tips, Slow My Guys, I Justine, Marcus Brown Lee, Alan Becker, Jeffrey Starr, and many more. With only two months to complete the challenge, the team and many other content creators published tons of content to promote the movement, which has since gained huge traction, amassing $14 million in the first 14 days. One of the largest donations of $1 million was made on the fourth day of the campaign from Elon Musk of Tesla and SpaceX. This was followed up the next day by a $1,001,000 donation from Tobias Lutka, CEO of Shopify, who was not about to be outdone by Elon. Of course, many other celebrity figures also donated. Obviously, these are a scratch on the bank balance of some of these donators, but it is great to see such a positive contribution from many key influencers, as the message from hashtag Team Trees is arguably much more significant than the trees themselves. But let's look into this in more detail. What is the social and environmental impact of hashtag Team Trees? It is estimated that the number of trees around the world has fallen by almost half since the start of human civilization. Deforestation increases carbon dioxide levels as there are less trees to absorb CO2, and when the products made from trees get burned or disposed of, they release their carbon back into the environment. But planting them could store away some of the carbon we've put into the atmosphere. The Team Trees project has partnered with the Arbor Day Foundation, a non-government organisation that has been planting trees in North America and around the world for the last 47 years. In fact, they're the oldest tree planting NGO, whose focus is on planting and maintaining native species and public forest lands managed by government agencies, so as not to disrupt local biodiversity. The motto is to plant the right trees in the right place at the right time for the right reasons. This is in contrast to other recent tree planting efforts, who although virtuous in intention, may be harming local wildlife. This is due to planting primarily monoculture plantations of trees, but more on that in a minute. Globally, there has never been more ambition and action in planting trees. In 2014, 51 countries pledged to plant over 3.5 million square kilometres of forest by 2030. This is almost as big an area as the entire European Union. The target, superficially at least, looks likely to be achieved. However, tree planting is not always good, according to Simon Lewis, Global Change Science, UCL. This is because the motives for planting trees are not always green. Remember the monoculture plantations we mentioned earlier? They are large tree planting efforts where thousands of hectares are planted with a single species of tree. Currently, half of the government tree planting pledges involve short rotation monoculture plantations. Short rotation means that they are planting trees with polluting fertilizer to speed up growth so they can be harvested for greater commercial value. The most common trees planted in tree planting projects are eucalyptus, oil palm and pine, which produce very lucrative raw materials, most of which is exported to developed countries, leaving behind the true cost of the resource, ecological degradation, depleted soil, pesticide contaminated water and exploited native population. Monoculture plantations of these trees suffocate biodiversity. In addition, Evergreen species like eucalyptus take up groundwater all year round, leading to dry earth and increased risk of forest fires. In January 2017 in Chile, 600,000 hectares of tree plantations, native forests and other lands went up in flames as a result of prolonged periods of drought in the widespread monoculture pine plantations. This caused 11 fatalities and massive social and economic harm. The Chilean fires provided further evidence that monoculture tree plantations undermine a region's climate resilience. They are highly susceptible to fire, pests and storm damage. They also erode the soils, suppress plant and animal biodiversity and deplete and contaminate water resources. When cut down for resource value, the exposure of loose depleted soil promotes desertification and increases the risk of landslides. Hence studies show that harvested plantations only store one fortieth of the carbon natural forests do. However, making and disposing of products made from harvested trees 
is simply returning the small amount of carbon saved back into the atmosphere. This takes us to the point that plantations are not forests, and not all tree planting efforts are beneficial to the environment. Sadly, many of them are harmful, but when government and public funding, largely due to the growing support of climate policies which can be deceitfully satisfied on paper through monoculture plantations whilst profiting from the resources harvested. If you'd like more details, please see the videos by The Economist and Ecosia linked in the description. The world is currently in love with the idea of planting trees. However, as noble as the notion is, we must be truthful about what our impacts really are. Otherwise, we will not see any real changes. An article published in Science last July estimated the total global tree cover potential. The results show there is space for an extra 0.9 billion hectares of forest cover, which if allowed to mature could store an optimistic 205 gigatons of carbon. This computational result assumed large areas of land which are not suitable for forest growth and was corrected by a different study to a more realistic 42 gigatons of carbon. Of course, this is still a significant amount of carbon. In fact, it is enough to sequester all of the carbon emitted in 2010. Of course, we are emitting more and more greenhouse gases each year, and there is only finite space to plant trees to remove these gases. Additionally, we still have to allow the forest to mature, which could take three to four decades. But this only emphasises the urgency to act. This is a prediction of the carbon dioxide emissions with associated temperature rise for the most aggressive climate response from the IPCC. In their special report, Global Warming of 1.5 degrees centigrade, ultimately, ecological restoration, if carefully implemented, can have a role in mitigating climate change. It is no substitute for the fact that most fossil fuel emissions will need to stop to meet the targets of the Paris Agreement. If our current climate policy pledges are upheld, then by the year 2050, we can expect a 3.5 degrees Celsius increase in average global temperature, which is considered insufficient by the Climate Action Tracker. This will cause the sea level to rise up to 0.3 metres, damaging coastal city infrastructure as well as habitat loss for fish and coastal species. As rising sea level coincides with more dangerous hurricanes and typhoons, unpredictable natural disasters will become more frequent which are already starting to occur and cause migration away from disaster-affected regions. In fact, the first half of 2019 alone saw the displacement of a record 7 million people due to natural disasters, nearly twice that of conflicts in the same period. This is not to say that planting trees is a bad thing. Tree plantations are environmentally harmful, but regeneration of natural forests is an effective way to increase climate resilience and biodiversity, as well as reducing climate change through CO2 absorption. But planting trees is hard and doesn't produce much economical profit, but it is one of the best ways we can combat climate change. So next time a tree planting effort asks you for your support, ask them, are you planting mixed forests or monocultures? As far as we can tell, the Arbor Day Foundation are not planting commercial monoculture plantations, and some of their projects are mixed species forests. International government intervention is the most effective way to combat climate change. However, we have yet to see any significant global action from any government Regardless, the most important takeaway from Team Trees is that large government action is not the only way to tackle climate change. It is possible within the public sphere, through small donations from large numbers of individuals who care about the future, to sway public opinion, gather funds and make a real impact on the global climate. Although the numerical impact of hashtag Team Trees is small, This will undoubtedly sow the seed for future large-scale, public sector-driven climate action. We would like to congratulate Team Trees for achieving their goal and for proving that the ability to regenerate our climate is within every individual's power. The challenge now for each of us is to maintain the momentum and keep searching for sustainable ways to clean up our environment. Thank you for watching what will hopefully be the first of many R Eden videos. Please like, comment and subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family. We hope to be uploading content on the environment, sustainability and how you can reduce your own carbon footprint. So please let us know what we did well, what we could do better and what you'd like to hear from us in future. Look after yourselves, each other and most importantly the planet around you. Thanks again, R. Eden.